Earthquakes are one of nature's most devastating forces. They claim on average 8,700 lives a year, and the human, economic and social damage to communities is truly staggering. Over the last 100 years, earthquakes are estimated to have killed more than a million people throughout the world and caused billions of dollars of damage. The southwest of England may seem an unlikely location to find cutting-edge research into living with earthquakes, but universities in the region are home to some of the world's leading investigators in this field. The main reason for doing earthquake engineering research in the UK is because we're training engineers who are going to be practicing worldwide. So graduates at Bristol University will be learning about earthquakes. They'll then get into industry and be designing buildings that will be built throughout the world and they need to know how to design those to withstand the earthquakes. The University of Bristol will be home to the new Blade facility, the Bristol Laboratory for Advanced Dynamics Engineering bringing together a range of scientists and equipment that will provide extensive testing and evaluation to improve the structure and construction of buildings in areas at risk. The key elements in reducing the impact of earthquakes on human life are to build new structures that better resist the effects of earthquakes and to find ways to strengthen existing structures. This new facility at Bristol is going to be fairly un unique worldwide. Uh, it's going to be one of the largest ones in Europe and we've incorporated a lot of uh, technologies and specific designs in the building that will allow us to do a lot of tests that no one else in the world can do. At the nearby University of the West of England, scientists are conducting research into materials used in base isolation techniques. Base isolation is increasingly seen as an important means of reducing the impact of shaking on large structures. The objective of my work is to understand better how, how the bearing works both this year, shortly after the bearing is installed in the, bearing, uh, in the building, but also in 20 or 30 years' time when the, the bearing has aged, how is the bearing going to behave after that length of time. Here we've got a little shaking table and I can actually put earthquakes through that into these models. If I switch on the earthquake now you'll see the tall building starting to vibrate quite badly and I've got it built into this a protection system. If I undo the base a little bit and isolate it from the ground you can see now that the ground moves underneath the building and the building stays where it is. If I reconnect it back to the ground the building starts vibrating again. A good understanding of the dynamics of all structures is essential in designing buildings to withstand earthquakes. The more scientists understand the effect of earthquakes on a wide range of structures, the more likely they are to develop and design new protection systems, reducing economic impact and most importantly, saving lives. My dream, if you like, is, is to have large areas um, of buildings isolated against earthquakes using various base isolation techniques so that you have a whole community on a platform and that platform is, is isolated against, ba against earthquakes by base isolation techniques. I'm very optimistic about the future of earthquake engineering. We're already doing very well protecting uh, new buildings. Uh, and I'm sure that 10, 20 years down the line we'll have developed the technologies that will allow us to protect these older, less well-built buildings. Uh, and I believe that one of the areas we should be focusing on more and more in the future is, as Adam has pointed out, the protection of low-cost dwelling houses because there is a huge loss of life involved and it's a relatively small investment.